That if you're identified as being someone who may have a camphor amoeba keratitis, a sample will be taken from the skin on your cornea that will make you feel pretty sore afterwards. And um, it's worth being available. Um, uh, you should be given some pain relief for that by mouth. And I would stay around near the clinic for a bit afterwards uh, when the anesthetic will off to see how uncomfortable it is. That will settle down quite quickly. So the doctor will take a sample of skin from the surface of the eye and send that off to the laboratory. Um, we sometimes do, if we can get a big enough piece, we'll send it to the pathology lab for histology where it's fixed and we can look and see if we can stain for organisms. A smaller amount of tissue will go on a slide where that's stained in the microbiology lab with special stains for acanthamoeba as well as for other organisms and it will be put into specific culture media for amoeba which are quite different from the ones we use for fungus and for bacteria and other causes of infection. You should also get confocal microscopy, and regrettably in the UK, confocal microscopy cost about £40,000. They're not available except in the major centres. It's not mandatory to have that, if, uh, and it's quite reasonable to start the treatment before uh, having a confocal microscope, but it can be a confocal microscopy. It's a, a test which is you know, not unpleasant to have done. You have a probe with a, a sterile probe. It's placed gently onto the surface of the eye. We can actually image the amoeba. It can be quite difficult to be sure whether there's amoeba or not in, uh, on confocal microscopy. It can be really useful when you get a classic appearance. So that um, uh, although it's not available everywhere, it, it's not necessary to have that done before starting treatment, but if patients aren't doing well, then uh, you should get confocal microscopy to see if we can really confirm the diagnosis with that. Culture is the gold standard. Confocal is very helpful when we don't get cultures, which we don't achieve in around 40% of patients, even though we think pretty sure they have acanthamoeba. Um, the other test that is done in some centers is to I try and identify acanthamoeba genes, DNA, by taking a smear and sending that to usually a different laboratory where they specialize in that technique. And that's also not widely available, but is available in some centers. And uh, that can be very helpful too, particularly when the cultures are negative and we're just not sure whether uh, patient you have amoeba or whether there might be a fungus there or a complex, more complex uh, bacterial infection. Generally, the the, for someone who's rec seen quite a few cases with the disease, the clinical picture for amoeba stands out a bit from these other conditions, but that's not enough to go on unless the patient's doing really well. So you have uh, conventional cultures, which every centre has, other than the very small ones, and they would send you to a, a centre for culture. Uh, uh, um, uh, something called PCR, which is a, a test to identify whether there's acanthamoeba DNA present and a special imaging technique called confocal. And ideally, you get all three, but you don't have to have treatment delayed if those two aren't available. Uh, if you do well, you won't need them, but if you're not doing well, then uh, it's useful to have those tests done to confirm that this is what you indeed have.